So to nobody's surprise, the DNC once again is back up to their old tricks. And I mean, after all the blowback that they received in 2016, when it was proven by Donald Brazil and WikiLeaks that they rigged the primary against Bernie Sanders, you'd at least expect them to be a little bit less conspicuous. And how they're trying to stack the deck against Bernie Sanders this time comes in the form of appointments from Tom Perez to the Democratic National Convention, filling it with individuals who either endorsed someone other than Bernie, worked for Hillary Clinton or Obama, or are outright haters of Bernie Sanders. Take a look at this list. Now, a couple of names that stand out are Barney Frank. He is appointed as one of the co-chairs to the Rural Committee, and he was a surrogate for Hillary Clinton and was relentless in his attacks against Bernie Sanders, attacked him for being a socialist, attacked him over and over again. And to have him as a co-chair of the Rules Committee, completely unacceptable. You also have John Podesta, who it was revealed by WikiLeaks that he questioned in an email how he can, you know, uh, shiv Bernie Sanders or stick a knife in Bernie Sanders, I'm paraphrasing. And really the only person who is explicitly aligned with Bernie Sanders here on this list is Larry Cohen. So, I mean, this is totally unacceptable. And if the DNC thinks that we're going to sit idly by and allow them to stack the deck against us when our movement is bigger than it was before when we're that much more desperate to beat Donald Trump? No. I mean, if they're not willing to live up to the uh, standards of unity that they set out, we're going to call them out. So for more on this, we go to Jonathan Easley of The Hill, who reports some Democratic National Committee members and supporters of Senator Bernie Sanders are venting frustration at DNC Chairman Tom Perez over his initial appointments to the committee that will oversee the rules and party platform at the nominating convention in Milwaukee later this year. Sanders' allies are incensed by two names in particular, former Representative Barney Frank, who will co-chair the Rules Committee, and Hillary Clinton's former campaign chair. Chairman John Podesta, who will have a seat on that committee. The Sanders campaign unsuccessfully sought to have Frank removed from the Rules Committee in 2016, describing him as an aggressive attack surrogate for the Clinton campaign. And Podesta, a longtime Washington political consultant and Clinton confidant, is viewed with contempt by some on the left. One of Podesta's hacked emails from 2016 showed him asking a Democratic strategist where to stick the knife in Sanders, who lost the nomination to Clinton that year after a divisive primary contest. There's a very small number of appointments of allies to Senator Sanders, said Yasmin Taib, a DNC member from Virginia who has not endorsed a candidate in 2020, but attended the 2016 convention as a delegate for Sanders. The appointments also include individuals that are outright hostile to Bernie Sanders and his supporters, she added. It's not the message the DNC should be sending to the grassroots right now when we're all working aggressively to defeat the racist in the White House. But here we are, which tells you that the DNC is not serious about beating Donald Trump. They cry and cry about unity, but where's the unity now? You put one individual who's an ally to Bernie Sanders out of all of these names, what, more than 100 people? And you stack it with consultants, lobbyists, former Hillary Clinton campaign officials and surrogates, haters of Bernie Sanders, and you just expect this to go over well with us? You know that this is not going to go over well, you know we're going to push back, but when we push back, what are they going to do? They're going to point to this pushback as an example of, oh, look at the Bernie bros, look at how divisive they are. They're so transparent. They don't think that we can see through them, but we know exactly what they're doing, and Tom Perez is a weasel, and he can, you know, talk about hope, he can uh, point his thumb and call Donald Trump a stooge of Vladimir Putin all he wants, but we all know he's a fraud and he should have resigned prior to the Democratic Party primary because as DNC chair, you are supposed to be impartial. But we can't believe that you're impartial if you are appointing a bunch of people who fucking hate one of the candidates. We can't believe that you will be impartial if you are making endorsements as DNC chair in particular Democratic primary uh, races. For example, in New York, he endorsed Andrew Cuomo over Cynthia Nixon. The grassroots wanted Cynthia Nixon. He endorsed Andrew Cuomo. What happened to impartiality? This is in the DNC's own charter, but yet you can't even live up to the standards that your own organization set out, Tom? I mean, what gives? I'll tell you what gives. They are frauds, and the only way that we can actually stop the DNC from being so corrupt, so rotten to the core, is if Bernie Sanders 
overcomes all of this and becomes the Democratic Party nominee, and he just cleans house, fires every single member of the DNC. Because guess what? If you win the Democratic Party's nomination, you get to take over the party. You become the new leader of the Democratic Party, right? This is what happened with Hillary Clinton. Um, she signed a joint fundraising agreement before she even actually captured the nomination. This is what Donna Brazile revealed. And she basically took over the DNC, the party. She was able to control their press releases. I believe that she uh, greenlit press releases. They kind of went through her. She controlled aspects of funding. So you do take over. So when we have Bernie Sanders surging in Iowa and New Hampshire possibly winning this whole thing, is now the time when you really want to do this, Tom Perez? When Bernie Sanders can easily clean house? Okay, so I mean, look, we know about Barney Frank, we know about John Podesta, but I want to go to a thread from um, Twitter user Kevin Gostola. He is a writer for Shadowproof, and he lays it all out. He kind of highlights why some of these names on this list, who may be less familiar to us, are incredibly problematic. For example, you have Danielle C. Gray, who is the chief legal officer for a private health insurance company, Blue Cross Blue Shield. I wonder if she supports Medicare for All. You have uh, Jake Sullivan, who worked for Hillary Clinton in 2016, and also Obama. wonder if he likes Bernie Sanders. You have CNN's Bakari Sellers, who is an infamous Bernie hater and member of APAC. You have Dan Shapiro, who agrees with Trump that the U.S. Embassy should be in Jerusalem. You have Craig Smith, who was White House political director for Bill Clinton, who went on to work for Hillary Clinton. I wonder how he feels about Bernie Sanders. You have Maria Cardona, who is a CNN contributor and corporate lobbyist, who has written op-eds where she has attacked Bernie Sanders for various reasons, namely because he is a socialist. You have Chris Liu from the Obama administration, who was a proponent of the TPP. You have Alexandra Gallardo Rucker, who endorsed Clinton in 2016 and now works for Mike Bloomberg. You have Charles Baker, another lobbyist. You have Heidi Heitkamp, a loser, former Democratic senator from North Dakota, who now works in corporate media and is a board member of the McCain Institute. Shocker. You have Elaine Kamark, who works at the Brookings Institute and who is on tape advocating that the DNC chair, Tom Perez, should have the power to strip away the nomination unilaterally if he doesn't believe that that winner is loyal enough to the Democratic Party. So you have lobbyists, consultants, pro-corporate Democrats, individuals that work directly for the industry that we're fighting to beat. I mean, this is unbelievable. So I'll link you to that full thread by Kevin. It is long, it is comprehensive, and I can't possibly share everything that he said about these names, but just know that this list needs to be scrapped completely scrapped. This is unacceptable. And the fact that Tom Perez thinks that he can get away with it, not going to happen. Not going to happen. We're going to call him out and he's going to say that we're being divisive, Bernie bros, but guess what? Too bad. Because we are tired of being fucked with. You rigged the primary in 2016 against us. So we're watching every single thing that you do. And maybe he thinks that he can get away with this. Maybe he could say, well, look, I put candidates for everyone on there. You know, uh, we have uh, candidates for Mike Bloomberg, surrogates for Kamala Harris, but also Larry Cohen, who supports Bernie. Not acceptable. Tom Perez, from the beginning, has been a snake, right? What did he do? He purged the DNC uh, with progressives. All the progressives on there that didn't really support him and supported Keith Ellison, they were fired. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And he did this under the guise of expanding diversity. Give me a break. He fired some of the most diverse people, right? Bab Cyperstein, who was a trans business owner, she was fired. The first trans member of the DNC, I believe, fired. You have individuals like James Zogby, fired. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just shocking how brazen they are. Like, they don't even care. But guess what? Um, we are going to fight. And we're going to win this time. We are going to defeat you. And when Bernie Sanders takes over the party, this is going to stop. And in the meanwhile, we're going to speak out and condemn this because this is totally unacceptable. And the list has got to be changed. Beta. 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 Beta.